This is a demo video for this uh, Roman Props MK1 uh, Ben Kenobi lightsaber. This is uh, going out to Hal. Hal, your MK1 is all installed and ready to send out to you. So installed with the Rudy Pando crystal chamber. Your uh, stock custom works chassis in here. We'll go through all that in a few moments. Um, I'll, I'll delve into everything later in the video, how to break the whole thing down. But for now, we'll just run through some features quickly. So with this, the access is very easy. You just clip off the back and there you have your kill switch, your uh, profi board access for the USB, your uh, SD card and your recharge port. So let's just switch it on. It's now on as requested. There is no music or no dialogue of any kind on this saber. It's just like, a, I guess you'd call it a classic lightsaber like you requested. And of course turns on blue. So these are the switches. This is the on activation on this side of the clamp card. And this side of the clamp card is the auxiliary switch. So switch on. You got your beautiful smooth swing with your profi. And we have a uh, stock custom works LEDs in the NeoPixel PCB connector. This blade plug that came from Roman props as well. And so then to give it a, open up the crystal chamber, you give it a twist and a pull and lock. And there is your Rudy Pando crystal chamber with the stock silver plated upgrades with the proplicator silver plated fin at the back and inside here is a real quartz crystal which I ground down to to fit the right diameter and I put an LED on each side to give you maximum brightness. So you've got your smooth swing and your flash on clash. So um, once this is open, of course, there is no shine through because you have uh, connectors in here. So when, when you slide back down, they connect. We'll go through all that in a moment as well. Let's just see the crystal uh, in off mode, the crystal pulses. And as requested, this has idle off. So after five minutes, this will switch off into standby mode. Now we're moving on to a cyan pulsing crystal. Let's just give it a close. So remember, it's a, you see the tracks along here, that's why it's a twist, a slide and a twist. And it locks in there nicely. I did have to sand down this a bit to make it a nice fit. It was a little bit tight. Now you see it's a beautiful fit. Now it was, it was almost like you had to, you know, yank it pretty hard and I didn't want you doing that. Um, so it is sanded down a little bit, but um, I think it fits nicely with the weathered look on this saber. I mean, the saber comes kind of, you see here, it comes scratched up and a little bit beat up. Like there's weathering, see all these little dinks and marks. You even have a few, I noticed down around here. It's the weathered look that, uh, as advertised on Roman props, is how this comes. So. So I think this sanding, it goes okay with your weathered look and it gives you a nice, smooth fit. So it's not too loose. It won't come out when you swing around, but if you just give it a twist, a pull, and a twist, there is your beautiful Rudy Pando silver upgraded um, crystal chamber. One thing to note is when you are twisting, Always hold it here. If you hold it here, because this, this twists off too, you see. Always hold it by this and do your twist, twist, pull, twist, pull, twist. So we'll move on to the next. Uh, you have red. Red and you have your crystal mimicking your blade with the flash and clash. This one is more of a blinking crystal. Moving on, fun. It has a fire font, kind of a Kylo Ren font. 
Moving on to green. And lastly, or not lastly, there might be two more here. What have we got? As requested, I gave you all the colors. This is white, and this is a kind of a, an Asokatano font. Yellow, there we go. I knew there was another one. Did we miss any? Purple. There we go. So you got your yellow, you got your purple, you got your green, got your white, got your blue, got your red, got your cyan, as requested. So all of the colors of the sabers are in there, all the classic colors. Again, you have a pulsing crystal here if it comes into focus. And then the last font is, of course, your battery uh, level font. So we won't see that without a blade in. So I'm just going to give a close up of this beautiful crystal chamber. Let it focus for a second. There we go. I love how it looks when it turns on from, from the back through these fins. It's, it's a beauty. Okay, so then um, we'll move on and show you your custom, custom blade that was built for this. So uh, as discussed, I had to, um, I don't know why my camera won't focus up here. There we go. I had to recess in your uh, PCB to allow for maximum blade grip in this uh, thin neck because you really don't have a lot to uh, to work with here. So let me just right one tiny um, Allen key here that Roman props put in. I know he was trying to keep it all as accurate as possible, and this is the tiniest Allen key you could get away with for blade retention. So this is your blade plug, and you see your stock neopixels to shine through. So you see you got your special recessed blade. I had to put a couple of uh, grub screws in it to uh, and a little bit of glue to keep it all in place, but, and it fits in beautifully. And that gives you maximum uh, grip for this thin neck saber. This, the outer tube of this saber, or this blade rather, goes all the way down as far as it can go. So that is the best you're going to get with a thin neck saber. And to me, it feels pretty good. I mean, always with a thin neck saber, you can't, you know, I mean, it, it's never recommended for heavy dueling, but. Um, you can swing around pretty good with this one. You see your blue blade. Cyan, 36 inch blade. Red. And the only other trade off of this blade is you have a, a little bit of a dark spot down here, but um, there's really absolutely not much could be done about that. I mean, like I said, I wanted to give you maximum blade depth to uh, keep it as solid as possible. So I had to I had to raise up your PCBs, therefore the LEDs within the blade were raised up a bit. The stock NeoPixel shine throughs do help. That's one of the major reasons I put them in there, as well as them just looking cool when the blade is out and shining through your blade plug. But um, it does help. You know, you got a slight dark spot there, but it's. It's still a really cool saber. Right now the lights are up pretty high in here. Let me turn off some lights and show you. Not, it's not very noticeable when you have that. Your green. Your white. Your yellow. And your purple, and then your battery level. So right now we're at about just over 50% battery. All right, so that is your uh, 
Let us get some light back on. That's your custom blade. Let's uh, jump into some um, other features inside this ever. Just to, just to give you a run through of the works inside. I'll take out the blade for now. So, as I showed you, this pops off. You get your nail under there, it pops off pretty nicely to give you a nice bit of access. It's just a really quick way to get access to your kill switch. Let's, let's turn it off for now. Like I said, kill switch, USB in, Profi, SD, and recharge. Uh, if you don't like that, you can always screw the whole thing off. So this also screws off, give you a little better, little better access. And then this whole part will actually slide off. So just be careful with it. Just whatever you like best yourself. I personally like the, the little flick off on the on the end. You just get your nail under there and uh, comes off nicely. It's really easy. Nice quick access. Um, so then delving in here. This whole panel back section also comes off. It's nice and heavy. There's a nice bit of nice bit of heft and weight to that. So this is your stock custom works chassis. Um I'll also open up here and we can show you the upside of this, the, the top side of this rather. So this little Allen key here, if you unscrew it, it will allow you, let's go a little more, it will allow you to completely remove this top side, this uh, pommel side, there we go, completely comes off. So there you'll see your connector and connector. This is what gives the connection for your blade. So your Allen key sits in this little track. That is your, your twist and slide and twist and slide. This also screws apart if you want to get a little closer look at your connector in here. And then we're broken down pretty small. But this here is the meat and potatoes of your saver. It still works all the same way. Click on your switch and turn it on. You still have your sound. You still got your flash and clash, everything. You just um, obviously cannot install a blade. So let's switch it off again for now. And I will show you the inner workings here. So with this, I do not suggest you take this apart yourself. I've got the clamp card in nice and tight in here. If you look in here, you see where it, it's pressing the switches beautifully. And I, I'd i rather you, you didn't mess with it or, or take it out too many times. But if, if you need to get in there for any reason, I'll show you how it's done. So first off, you gotta take these off. These are pretty tight to get them off. These are just dummy. Dummy buttons. And one and two. And then open up your clamp and really gently slide this card out. Nice and gentle. You don't want to damage anything, you don't want to hurt the chassis. Let me get it a bit more light over here. Let's see, can we see this? There we go. So we slide it out nice and gently. And here you see your stock custom works clamp card switches, which also, so this has to pop out to get the, uh, the graphics clamp off. So with this, I get a little tweezers and I go in underneath really gently, push up 
each side, this side, this side, nice and gentle until it pops out. These are our three little connectors to make the switches work. So you see the augs is wired. And this was a real, this was a real treat to wire. <laughs> this was such a tricky little, um, little mechanism. Um, so the auxiliary is wired to this. The main switch is wired to this and they're both wired as a, as a common ground to the middle. So I had to run a wire down here and down here and then a wire goes down here and up and around and back down here because it can't go through this hole. So you see here's your wires. Your wires running over top and down around. It was a, it was a little bit of a challenge this but we got there in the end. And then I actually had to um, pack them up a little bit with little pieces of wire just to uh, keep it from pushing down too much. I'm losing focus here again. All right, there we go. So let me just get this calibrated here. So once you've gone, come this far, you can just gently slide this off. And there is your chassis workings. This is where the switches are wired to. Uh, my camera's having a real problem focusing. There we go. Uh, it was such a tight squeeze getting the wires through here. I had to pop out a little bit around here and drop a little bit of glue here and there. Um, all the wires go this to your speaker is in here all the wires go top and bottom of the speaker and in i gave it i gave myself a little bit more of a challenge by giving you two leds i think one led probably would have sufficed but i like how how nicely it's lit up with two so with another led in here i had to run an extra three wires through these little gold tracks these little gold channels so there's six wires running through this and this three for your main blade three for your LED here and then I had another three for the LED here um, connect the negatives all together here and pull through yeah it was a challenge and we can also remove these pieces of the chassis here to show you your profi board and all your little wiring going on here so like I said I had to pull all the wiring over the top and bottom of the speaker and then over the top and bottom of the battery there is your battery that's your i can't get this in focus it's an 18350 battery and uh, you see all your wiring running through a lot of wire management to be done here and then wired your recharge port your profi board and your kill switch so that's it. Um, you can still fire up your saber even in this configuration. Just get your three little pins and pop into your three little pins. And oh, we got a little kill switch first. The kill switch on. And we're still on. All right, let's leave it off. Let's leave the kill switch off. Let's leave get everything back together. Always be if you're if you're delving into this yourself. Always be very gentle with these little things. They're they're very delicate, and like I said, it's probably best you don't trifle with these things yourself. But if you ever absolutely need to, this is how it's done. So let's get going. We're putting everything back together here. You put your clamp card on first, or not your clamp card, excuse me, your, your Graflex clamp, I guess you call it. Put that on first and then get one of these screws in to make sure you're lined up. Because you're going to need to be... Now you're lined up if you have one screw in. There's a little bit of play in it, but that's fine. You just want this to go into your three pins. So be very careful with this. It's got to go in. Now, if that feels good, so before you go any further, test it out. We're good. We're in. So your clamp card is in and working. All right, turn it back off. 
and then get your next your next dummy switch and inner cores right both dummy switches in and tighten them up now with our clamp card so we're very careful putting this in we want to push down on the little you see the little kind of springs in the 3d printed stock clamp switch card you want to push down those little springs with your finger when you're passing them and always have your kill switch turned off for this because i'm pressing the buttons right now and now we're in beautifully close your cam clamp card turn on give it another test beautiful perfect okay so to put your um covers back on your chassis they clip onto the bars that are here and they are different the top and bottom are different so make sure you're clipping on the right one clip and clip that's on let's put our pommel back on pommel is on and now let's go with our grenade section so make sure we're nice and loose here so you don't scratch anything put it on and line it up with the track see the track and what you want to do with this is twist it a nice nice bit until it's almost tight and then see how it feels you can always back it off a little bit if it's too tight but see that's a little bit too tight so i'm going to back it off it was giving a bit of resistance there there we go beautiful perfect so this is tight and then for this when you are screwing this on be careful open the grenade always i don't want you screwing it on <coughs> Um, with this closed because you will screw your PCB connectors around on your Pogo connectors and it's just not good. Just keep it open nicely. So there we are. All back together. An absolutely beautiful saber. Um, let's just show you this again real quick. And this is off. Just show you how easy it is to plug in here with your, your charger and um i'm going to give you one of these adapters because it's a uh, it's a 1.3 millimeter recharge port and boom as easy as that to charge very easy access to your property board just a standard straight usb and boom plugged in as easy as that and then your SD card does require like a little tweezers or something to pull that out, but you'll get it. There you go, little tweezers. Boom. Easy as that. So, absolutely beautiful saver, beautiful chassis. It was a very tricky install, but very enjoyable. Uh, it came out beautifully. I'm really happy with how it came out. And uh, I love how easily accessible as everything is on this and um how beautiful it sounds and shines through and, and the weight of this thing is absolutely beautiful it's where do you get your hands in this it's just such a nice weight it just feels like a like a real lightsaber would you know so that is it i hope anybody else watching enjoyed this Give me a like and subscribe and Hal, your new baby is going to be on the way to you very soon. Thanks everyone for watching.